Hello and welcome to the Truck Grand Prix here at Zolder. Now it is the penultimate round of the Lotus Cup Europe and we still have five races to play out, so this weekend is certainly set to be a thriller. It's a chilly Sunday morning here at Zolda with track temperatures around 19 degrees. Now you join us on the track for the start of race one. Qualifying was prosperous for Jonathan Walker as he qualifies in P1. Last year's two-time race winner Gregory Rass qualified in P3. And last year's 2014 overall champion Jeremy Lorenko in P4. Now a man that's proving unstoppable this year is John Rass who qualified in P1 once again in production class. Time for us to move out of the way and you join the action. As ever, a gigantic grid for the Lotus Cup Europe, headed by John Walker. Then we've got Xavier Georges alongside him on the front row. Jeremy Lorenko should fly from fourth. He has been in a rich vein of form. Then it's Philippe and Jean-Baptiste Loop on row three. John Rass, head of the production class in 20th place. He has absolutely dominated this year and great to see him up inside the top 20. But Phil Capstick, Jason McAnulty, I'm sure, will be hot on his heels. Marcus Nikovic also driver who often goes well and then at the back of the field David Harvey should be able to pick his way up through from 33rd it's a long distance to travel around the former home of the Belgian Grand Prix we get ready for the start of the first race this is the rolling start as the cars come to the gantry the lights change the way we go and it's elbow to elbow between Xavier George in the sky blue car the white machine the John Walker and around the outside of both of them goes Jeremy Lorenko and it's Lorenko the dark car with an orange stripe along the centre who leads the way they're all clean through the first couple of turns as we go in car with Christophe Lissandra one of the most prominent of the 211s as we pick up the pace coming out of Canal Bocht on towards Lucien Bianchi Bocht which is where, of course, Alan Jones crashed that 1981 Belgian Grand Prix before they then accelerate on towards the first of the chicanes. Here's Lorenko, who's got Joel Walker, Xavier George on his heels. Gregory Rass's result has been shuffled down to fourth place through all of that. And there we caught a glimpse of the black of of Steve Williams, who is directly in front of Benoit Roget as they then climb up over the boot section of the circuit and then into the chicane at Dralman Bocht. A little bit sideways from Xavier Georges. Very, very sideways from Frank Laroche. Around he goes, and he just keeps it out of the wall. Well, the first marshal completely unflappable. The second rushing in to get the green flag waving as Laroche finds a gear and gets on his way. Unfortunately, this early on the race, although it's cost him time, it should still give him plenty of opportunity to carve back through the field so coming towards the end of the lap and it is Lorenko who's got the advantage from John Walker Gregory Rass meanwhile has found the way past Xavier George who has been shuffled down in these early stages Thierry Verheist has also had a good first lap he's up into fifth back in car with Benoit Roger as he moves up through the gears in pursuit of the Vore up ahead of him and there is Steve Williams. In fact, thinking about looking to the inside of Christophe Lazondra, who corrects a big slide. I don't think he had assistance there. Possibly just caught out by the low track temperatures that Kiri was talking about. It's often the way with these races later in the season. Actually, when it's quite sunny, the track take you a while to warm up. The race starting just after 11 o'clock local time here in Zolder. As into the chicane once more already the leading duo of Lorenko and Walker just easing away there is Thierry Verheist as he jinks on the brakes flicks through the chicane and he has got Philippe Loop in hot pursuit and we've got the battling Steve Williams he's got a couple of the two 11s right into his tail Lorenko doing as he's done soft in the season trying to break away into the pit lane that is Philip Van Pepenega hopefully he'll just uh, be able to get the car checked over and back into the fray fairly rapidly and well that was going to Andrew Wright in the bright orange 211 Andrew we've seen uh, several times in a, in a bright red Elise but moving up to the 211 so into the end of the lap is Lorenko who 
negotiates. Jackie Hicks boxed. Many of the uh, corners hit. There's older circuit named after legendary drives of years gone by, and there's certainly a strong case that Jackie Hicks, uh, arguably Belgium's greatest ever racing driver, as Nathalie Jennings Prache looks to the inside of Andrew Wright, is able to slide past, gains the place in the bright pink 211 as they flash through in to start another lap. And flicking in to the, the first turn here, named Erster, as Andrew Wright looks to fight back to the inside, Nathalie Jenny Prache. Jenny Prache, though, finds the traction around the outside. That gives her the inside line for the next corner, and she'll be able to reclaim the place. And while John Rass would appear to have possibly dropped behind McAnulty, and so that could be very interesting as the production battles, as ever, continuing throughout the field. Meanwhile, just looking to the inside, there is Steve Williams. Car in front runs wide across the chicane as they climb up over the brow and the hill. It's one of the faster sections of the Zolder circuit. Hosted Formula 1 up until the mid-1980s but remains a very prominent fixture on many international championship calendars. It's Jenny Prache, clear of Jean-Pierre Jenny Prache, and has also got Robin Nilsson just in pursuit. This is our top three in the race over. Jeremy the Raincoat still leads the way from the white car of Jonathan Walker and then the white and red stripe car of Gregory Rass. They ease through the chicane, complete the lap past the teams on the pit wall. One or two pit balls proffered. So they then set up nice and early for the left-hander that starts the lap before they then loop back around the pits complex. There is Christophe Lizondra. Lizondra getting a little bit of pressure. There comes Nicola Frere just behind him. Steve Williams then still able to withstand the pressure of that glut of 2.11s, indeed it is. There is Frere, the white exige, right in onto the tail of Christophe Lizondre, as all the while Jeremy Lorenko leads the way out front. And actually Gregory Rass just beginning to come back onto terms now with Jonathan Walker. We've got Xavier George, Thierry Verheist, and a big gap in the traffic. Meanwhile, here is John Rass, who is looking to challenge and is possibly going to go past can't quite able to we didn't quite see how that finished as Lorenko picks his way through the chicane and this is the beauty of the Lotus Cup Europe is that wherever you look through the field there is always a dice in progress this is the section circuit from and Bocht with the addition of the chicane in the mid 80s as now towards the end of another lap. Jeremy Lorenko really them off very, very rapidly. Pole position for John Walker, by the way, 1 minute 42.2, which is about 139 kilometres per hour. So getting on for about 100 miles an hour, average speed for lap. Meanwhile, Steve Williams in amongst the action and demoted by Jean-Baptiste Loop in his 211. Philippe Loop in the Exige V6 Cafard, somewhat further on up the road. But Williams now looks to fight back, moves back to the inside of Jean-Baptiste Loop. And there is the Black of Aura of Steve Williams. And as the pair of them battle, they are beginning to reel in the Christophe Lezondre Nicolas Ferrer battle. So that is all beginning to close up very nicely. Meanwhile, Nathalie Genu Prache has been dropped a little bit by Andrew Wright. She's now got Jean-Pierre Genu Prache in close pursuit and there is the white car carving scything back through the field of Frank LaRoche but more crucially you could see that up into the leader of production class had gone John Rass he'd moved clear of Jason McAnulty so that is very much business as usual meanwhile Steve Williams is right onto terms now with Nicolas Ferrer as they fling through the chicane up over the crest in the hill and then Swooping down here, immediately into the left-hand kink. Williams looks to the inside for the chicane. There's no space there. Lafayette rides the curbs. So does Williams. And then they will 
be heading through one of the faster sections of the circuit as the race leader, Jeremy Lorenko. Every single lap, and this has been the case throughout much of the season, it's just a tenth or two on his rivals, but it means the cumulative effect over the right course of the race can be really quite devastating. There is Thierry Verheist. Now Verheist has not given up a pursuit of a podium place here. He's got Xavier Georges immediately ahead of him. Xavier Georges in the sky blue and orange the tree that was on the front row of the grid. Back to the Steve Williams battle. And how much progress has he made? The answer is none at all in terms of positions, but he is appreciably closer to Nicolas Ferret as the pair of them run nose to tail into the turn. Fling through the left-hander. Now can Williams pick up the pace on the X? He uses all the curb, but so does Nicolas Ferrer. It means that Ferrer has got the optimum racing line through the second corner as they then head on towards Canal Bocht. We'll pick them up again as they come out of Lucien Bianchi Bocht. Let's look into the background as Luke comes past us. There is Christophe Lezondre. Nicolas Ferrer. Now where is the Black Avora? of Williams. The answer is it's clear of Ferrer. So as Steve Williams gains the place, Jeremy Lorenko leads the way and Zolder will take a short break. Join us in a moment's time as the action continues.